A gaming PC is a lot like a grand piano. You can play it immediately, but it's a lot better if you tune it before you tickle the ivories. Today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do the first time you press that power button, whether you built it yourself or not. There are a lot of things that you're going to want to do before you actually start using this on a daily basis. Before you even turn it on, you want to make sure that the internet is not connected? This is because if your computer is running Windows 10, for example, that's the only way to set up a local user account. If you have the internet connected during the setup process, it will require you to log in with a Microsoft account, and nobody wants that. Another hot tip after you've set up your local user account is to make the username user. This is because if you're going to ever have to troubleshoot and you're going to be looking up tutorials online, when you see a file path in the instructions, they typically put user in place of your username. And rather than having to go through all of these file paths and replace the word user with your username, you can just copy paste them. It is now safe to connect your computer to the internet. And let's be real, you should be using a wired connection. That is if you're a furious gamer. You've got lots of dedicated wham. Once your computer's online, Windows will probably start updating on its own. But it doesn't hurt to actually go in and tell it to check for updates. Some of these can be pretty large downloads and depending on the speed of your machine might take a while to install. So you want to get this process started as soon as possible. This machine had a lot of updates to do when I first turned it on. Just like your mother, Trebek. But screen recording while you're doing major updates, especially driver updates, is basically impossible. So you're just going to have to trust me on this one. With that underway, now is a great time to go get your GPU manufacturer's software. I have an NVIDIA graphics card in this machine, so we're going to download NVIDIA GF Experience because I'm lonely and NVIDIA is a high class. Oh, wait, sorry, NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Anyway, this is a great tool to make sure your drivers are always up to date. Windows Update doesn't always have the absolute latest and greatest driver, so you'll notice, despite having completed Windows Update, we still had a graphics driver update to do. So let's do that and wait for it to complete before we do our next step. Your PC is going to have basically no software on it. So let's grab the essentials. This video is not sponsored by the way. I just happen to like using Ninite to grab everything that I need when I set up a new computer, but you don't have to download everything from here. It's actually a really good idea to just go to the site, look at the list of all the commonly used free programs that you can get from there and go grab them from the official website for each one. I just find that this is a lot less work so I'm just going to check off everything that I want, download it, and let it install everything all at once. You may have wondered why I didn't install a new browser yet, and this is why. We're going to get it at the same time as we get everything else. Now, the first one you're going to want to open is Steam, because you probably have a ton of games to download, and they're probably huge, just like your So we can get those downloads going in the background while we get some other things done. If you have more than one storage drive on your computer, but you're not seeing it when you're trying to go create a Steam folder, don't freak out. It just means we need to go to our next item on the list, creating and formatting hard drive partitions. If you have multiple drives in this computer, some of them may have not been set up yet. We just need to go to create and format hard disk partitions. You'll be able to see anything that is unallocated. So let's right click on that, create a new partition, give it a name and a letter, and then move on. Now that you've created the partition, you can go back to Steam and create a Steam folder on any of the drives that you wanted to install games to. Man, we've installed a lot of programs and we're not even halfway done yet, but I bet you a lot of those programs are going to want to start up every time we turn on our computer. So let's go to Task Manager and stop that. You can right click on the taskbar, select Task Manager, head on over to Startup and disable any unnecessary programs from starting up when you turn on your computer. I like to keep things pretty bare bones so that my PC is usable almost immediately upon logging in, but your tastes may vary. And while we've got Task Manager open, why don't we check to see if we're actually getting all of the performance that we're supposed to. Let's pop over to the Performance tab to see if all of our memory is showing up. Count the number of installed sticks of RAM. I've got four and it's showing four sticks on here. So we Gucci. But wait, I paid for 3200 megahertz RAM and this is only showing it's running at 2666. Did I get ripped off? Do I have to speak to the manager? Okay, take a deep breath. <sighs> this is normal. 
Memory almost always defaults to running at its lowest possible speed to ensure stability. So unless you bought a pre-built and they took care of this for you, you're probably leaving some performance on the table. So we're going to reboot, mashing delete, F1 and or F2, depending on how your motherboard likes it. Now is where you get to feel like elite hacksaw. XMP or extreme memory profiling is not always what it's called, but you'll find something similar as you root through your BIOS. It'll probably be in overclocking settings, but you may want to look up the manual for your motherboard to see how this is done. Once you've found it, set it to auto and your system will probably do a tuning job Bunta Fujiwara would be proud of. Save your settings, but before we leave the BIOS for good, we're going to go set our fan curves. If you have fans capable of having the speeds customized, this is a great time to set your curves towards silence or performance depending on your preferences. Or you can trust the gods of chaos and just assume that whatever balanced profile your system has by default is good enough. Now, we're done in the BIOS, but we're not done yet. Let's save our changes and restart and head back into Windows. If you did your job right, Task Manager should show the memory is running at the correct speed. But you know what's probably not at the correct speed yet? That sweet gaming monitor you just hooked up. You paid for 144 hertz, but just like your RAM, that bad boy is probably running at min spec. And you don't want to embarrass yourself by thinking, ooh, my new monitor looks so smooth when it's actually only running at 60 hertz. So now we're going to right click on our desktop, go into display settings, advanced display settings, and we're gonna crank that refresh rate because you're extreme to the max. Okay, so now you might think I'm ready for gaming, right? Wrong. We gotta test this shit. How do you know if it can handle a load? Just like your So I'm going to grab Furmark and hit it with everything we got. CPU and GPU stress tests, let's go. Let these run for a while until the temperatures stabilize or your computer crashes. Your computer shouldn't crash even when you're hitting it with everything you've got. So if you do get a blue screen, you probably have a hardware issue. If it does crash before we go testing hardware, just double check that all of your drivers installed correctly, go back to Windows Update and just make sure that you weren't in the middle of a driver install or something when everything went wrong. I will say though, generally speaking, if it's dying under extreme load, you probably didn't get a big enough power supply. If you went full modular, you can save yourself a lot of trouble by buying the same model of power supply, but with a higher wattage. Just leave all your cables in place, swap the PSU out, and then return, or keep, the smaller one with all the new cables. Do not connect a power supply to cables that came with a different model of power supply. They may fit, but they're not all made the same. So if you didn't have a big enough power supply and you bought a completely different model, then you're going to need to do everything all over again. And that includes all of that sweet, sweet cable management that you did. Sorry, bud. Now, once your PC has survived a CPU and GPU stress test unscathed, it's time to look at the temperatures. Were they acceptable? Firmark tells you in the top left corner what the temperatures are. So if you left it on long enough for everything to get up to its maximum operating temperature, you're going to want to look up your CPU and GPU to see what is an acceptable operating temperature for them. If you're exceeding that, then you need to reconfigure your cooling. Make sure the fans aren't obstructed and maybe tuck some cables away for improved airflow or add some more fans. Okay, so can I play games now? Yes, but before we launch them, we do have one more thing that we should do. So you might notice that Steam Cloud was unable to sync my Baldur's Gate 3 save file, and that's because it was open on my Steam Deck and I closed it without giving it time for it to upload to Steam Cloud. So you may also have this issue with your older gaming computer or any other device that you play Steam games on. So you're going to want to go over to that device, make sure that you've saved the game, and then close the game but don't turn off the device until you see that it has finished uploading to Steam Cloud. You don't want to start playing until your Steam Cloud has synced, or you may end up losing any progress that was on that save file on the other device, because now you'll have conflicting save files and you'll have to choose where to go from there. Now, let's go into Steam and enable the FPS counter so that we can see if we're actually getting good enough performance in the games that we're playing. Generally speaking, you're going to be wanting to get more FPS than the number of hertz in your monitor's refresh rate. So if you've got a 60 hertz monitor, you wanna be getting at least 60 frames per second. If you got 144 hertz, you want at least 144 frames. See what I'm saying? See what I'm getting at? 
Uh, bing, bada, boom. Hey! If your FPS doesn't exceed your refresh rate, that's when it can start to feel choppy. You can enable things like VSync or FreeSync or whatever they call it now, where if your frame rate drops, it also adjusts your monitor's refresh rate. But the other thing that you can always do, you can start adjusting, or let's be real, dropping video settings in the games that you're playing, or you can enable things like DLSS or FSR to see if that makes an improvement. Now, if this video was sponsored, which it isn't, this is the time where I would be telling you to get a VPN. But nobody sponsored this video, so I'm going to leave it up to you whether you choose to raw dog the internet or not. Just be careful out there, okay? Your mother and I worry. The internet was the wild west back when we were your age. And if you want to see what building a gaming PC was like back in those days, check out this video where Dan builds his dream Windows XP gaming PC.